Molten metal, intense heat, roaring furnaces. This is not science fiction. This is the heart of a modern iron foundry. It's a place where ancient traditions meet cutting edge technology, where raw, discarded metal is reborn into the parts that keep our world running. From recycled scrap to high precision components, this is the journey of iron, transformed by human ingenuity into the machinery that shapes our everyday lives. It all begins with the raw material. The backbone of iron foundry work is scrap, tons upon tons of recycled iron and steel collected from old machinery, vehicles, demolished buildings, and industrial waste. These piles of scrap metal might look like little more than junk, but in the world of metallurgy, they are treasure. Each load is carefully sorted, ensuring the right blend of metals to achieve the desired properties in the final product. Once sorted, this metal is loaded into massive induction furnaces, the heart of the melting process. Here, powerful electric currents generate temperatures soaring above 1,500 degrees Celsius, hot enough to liquefy solid iron and steel in a matter of minutes. In some foundries, the cupola furnace still reigns, a vertical shaft filled with alternating layers of coke, flux, and scrap, where combustion and chemistry work together to create molten iron. Each furnace has its own advantages. Induction furnaces offer precise temperature control and cleaner melts while cupola furnaces excel in continuous, high-volume production. As the metal melts, it's not just a wild cauldron of heat and fire. This is a place of science and precision. Samples are drawn from the molten pool and analyzed in real time. Technicians check for carbon content, silicon, manganese, and dozens of trace elements. If the composition isn't perfect, they add alloying elements, sometimes nickel or chromium for strength, sometimes molybdenum or copper for corrosion resistance. The goal? Meet the demanding standards of modern engineering, where every part must perform under pressure. While the metal is reaching its molten state, another team is hard at work preparing the molds. The most common method is sand casting, a process as old as metalworking itself, but now refined by automation and advanced materials. Specially formulated sand, bonded with clay or synthetic resin, is packed tightly around a precise pattern, a replica of the final part. This pattern is carefully removed, leaving behind a negative impression in the sand. For parts that need internal cavities, think of the complex channels inside an engine block, cores are used. These are carefully crafted sand shapes placed inside the mold to create the hollow spaces. The placement of cores is a delicate art. They must be strong enough to withstand the pouring of molten metal, yet fragile enough to break away once the casting cools. The intricacy of the core assembly often determines the complexity of the finished part, with the molds and cores ready, attention turns to the most dramatic part of the process, pouring. Molten iron, glowing orange-white and nearly 1400 degrees Celsius, is tapped from the furnace into specially lined ladles. Teams of skilled workers, often called ladlemen, control every movement, balancing the heavy, liquid load as it is transported to the molds. Timing is everything. The metal must be poured at just the right temperature, neither too hot nor too cool, or the casting will be flawed. As the ladle tips and the fiery stream flows into the waiting molds, precision is paramount. The speed of the pour, the height of the stream, the way the metal fills every cavity. Each detail influences the quality of the casting. Safety is ever-present. One slip, one splash, and lives could be at risk. Foundries are built on discipline and teamwork, forged in the glow of molten iron. Once the molds are filled, the waiting begins. The heat of the metal must slowly transfer into the sand and then into the air as the casting solidifies. For small parts, this can take a few minutes. For massive components, it may take hours. Cooling too quickly can lead to cracks or internal stresses, so patience is essential. Foundry workers monitor the temperature and timing, ensuring the castings emerge whole and strong. When the time is right, the molds are broken apart in a process known as shakeout. Vibrating machines or manual tools are used to separate the solidified casting from the sand. The result? A rough iron part, still coated in sand and a layer of dark oxide formed during cooling. The transformation from raw metal to finished product is far from complete, but the essential shape is now locked in iron. Next comes cleaning and finishing. The raw casting is covered with excess material, gates, risers, and the remnants of the pouring process that must be cut away. Workers use pneumatic hammers, grinders, and abrasive wheels to remove these unwanted sections and smooth rough edges. Sandblasting removes the remaining sand and oxide, revealing the true surface of the iron beneath. Quality is everything. Each casting is carefully inspected, 
first by eye and then with advanced tools. Dimensional gauges check for accuracy against engineering drawings. Non-destructive testing methods, like ultrasonic scanning or industrial x-ray, peer inside the metal, searching for hidden flaws or voids. Only parts that pass these rigorous tests will be certified and sent on to their next destination. Some castings are destined for further processing, machining, drilling, or heat treating to achieve the final specifications. Others are ready as is, strong and durable, shaped by fire and sand. Each one is accompanied by material certificates, tracing its journey from scrap pile to finished product. This paperwork is not a formality. It's a guarantee that every part can be traced and trusted, vital in industries where safety and reliability are paramount. But where do these cast iron parts go? The answer is everywhere. In agriculture, foundry-made components form the backbone of tractors, plows, and harvesters, enduring the stresses of fieldwork year after year. In automotive manufacturing, engine blocks, brake drums, and suspension components rely on iron's unique combination of strength and castability. In construction, you'll find cast housings in pumps, valves, and heavy machinery, moving earth and shaping skylines. Even in the high-tech world of aerospace, iron castings play a crucial role, forming the robust casings of turbines, gearboxes, and support structures. Every machine, from the smallest pump to the largest excavator, has a cast iron heart forged in a foundry like this one. Behind every machine is fire, behind every casting is craftsmanship. Foundries don't just make metal, they build the bones of modern industry. The skill of the pattern makers, the precision of the furnace operators, the teamwork of the pourers and finishers, all come together in a dance of heat, timing, and human effort. It's easy to overlook the humble origins of the parts that power our world. The next time you see a tractor plowing a field, a car speeding down the highway, or a skyscraper rising on the horizon, remember, each of these began as molten metal shaped by hands and minds in the heart of a foundry. The story of iron casting is a story of transformation, of turning waste into wonder, of creating order from chaos. It's a testament to human ingenuity, combining science, art, and hard work to give shape to the world's most essential machines. So the next time you hear the roar of an engine or the thrum of heavy machinery, think of the foundry, the fire, the sand, the steel nerves of the workers, and the relentless pursuit of perfection. This is where industry begins. This is where progress is forged. Subscribe for more behind-the-scenes engineering stories. This is Global Foundry.